Guys, these, these increases are just absolute insanity. Wow. This graph, guys, is just... Yeah, it's... I don't even know what to say when it comes to this. This is absolutely crazy. Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another viewer-requested fundamental analysis video. Today, guys, let's continue on with the stocks that you guys recommended. Now, we do have a pretty big week when it comes to earnings. However, I want to continue doing this, but just so everybody's aware, we do have a few earnings that I would like to cover for starters, Home Depot tomorrow, as well as Starbulk and on Wednesday, Target and Cisco as well. So that's definitely something that I really would like to cover. And I believe, guys, I've spoken with Mike that we are going to have a live stream tomorrow on Tuesday, but probably around like 6.30 or 7 p.m., covering the whole thing with the debt ceiling, as well as covering any of the earnings that we have recently gotten. So yeah, just be prepared for that, guys. But today, let us go on with spinning the wheel to see what company we should analyze. <laughs> and we got the company Guys Hack. Now, this company was brought up by none other than Lord Baron D or Lord Baron K, Lord Baron DK. I'm gonna put here the comment that he mentioned when he recommended this. So yeah, let's take a look at guys the company H A C K hack and see if the current share price this is looking like a buy based on a fundamental perspective. So with the set, let's get started with this analysis. Well, uh, apparently, guys, I wasn't aware that H A C K was actually an ETF. So Guys, I can't do ETFs, okay? When it comes to ETFs, that's not something I'm able to do because, well, ETF is a is just a basket of companies. So here we got the Prime Cybersecurity ETF, which is, you know, okay, that sounds really, really great. However, unfortunately, in order to analyze an ETF, you would take a look at all of these companies and then essentially just take the average, right? Based on, of course, their weights. So yeah, guys, um, please do not give me ETFs because I can't do them. Now, Seeing that I can't do ETFs, guys, I am going to do another company that he recommended in the form of Fortinet, FTNT. All right, so let's take a look at Fortinet instead and see what we got to learn from this company. So this company, everybody, is one that I have done here on the channel once before, and I don't really remember saying anything bad about it now i really took a look at the fundamentals and they're they're they're, they're really good actually but they are a cybersecurity company and they just had earnings as of may 4th so we are going to take a quick look at those earnings reports as well now in regards to their current earnings summary we can see that the eps normalized actual came in at 34 cents beat by 5 cents eps gap actual 31 cents beat by 8 cents revenue 1.26 billion dollars which is beat by 63.55 million dollars so with that said let's take a look now at their first quarter 2023 financial results and like always guys this will be linked in the description below for everybody to read which i highly encourage everybody to do because this is not financial advice every investment is the present value of all future cash flow and of course i am not doing due diligence so please make sure you go beyond just reading their earnings report also read their 10ks as well so we got over here guys first quarter 2023 highlights Product revenue of $500.7 million, up 35% year over year. Service revenue, $761.6 million, up 30% year over year. Total revenue, $1.26 billion, up 32% year over year. Billings of $1.5 billion, up 30% year over year. Deferred revenue of $4.88 billion, up 33% year over year. Gap operating income of $273.5 million, up 81% year over year. Non-gap operating income of $334 million dollars up 59 percent year over year gap operating margin of 21.7 percent non-gap operating margin of 26.5 gap diluted net earnings per share attributable to for the net inc of 31 cents or 82 percent up year over year guys these these increases are just absolute insanity wow free cash flow from operations absolutely gotta love it guys 677.5 million dollars and the free cash flow overall 647.2 million dollars now 
We got over here the comment from the CEO. We got quote revenue growth the first quarter was 32% due to strong growth in both product and service revenue. With 35% product revenue growth, we continue to gain market share while being a leading product revenue company in the cybersecurity industry. Service revenue grew over 30% for the first time in the quarter in six years. We believe we have a significant opportunity to continue to grow service revenues by upselling value added security services to our large installed base of customers, said Ken Ji, founder and chairman and CEO of the company Fortinet. Companies of all sizes are increasingly recognizing the Fortinet's in integrated 40 OS, okay, and custom ASIC technology can deliver a lower total cost of ownership while improving the efficiency and efficacy of their security. Guys, I mean, that's really short and sweet, and I actually really like it because, well, I mean, there really is no bad news when it comes to this company like at all. Now, when it comes to over here, uh, financial highlights for the first quarter, it's essentially what we just read up here, right? It's essentially what we just read up here, so I'm not really going to go over it. However, what I really want to see it is this guidance. So we got over here for the second quarter of 2023, the quarter that we're in right now, for the next currently expects revenue range of 1.28 billion to 1.32 billion again comparing this to the current revenue that, that they just did is 1.26 billion for the first quarter so yeah they're expecting a little bit more than what they did q1 by around what 200 what is it 2 million dollars or something or 20 million dollars or something along those lines at the lowest end to 1.32 billion. That's, that's actually really, really big, guys. Billings in the range of 1.56 billion to 1.6. The billings this quarter was 1.5. So, okay, so once again, a little bit higher than what they did this quarter. Non gap gross margin in the range of 75.5 to 76.5. Non gap operating margin in the range of 24.5 to 25.5. Diluted non gap net income per share attributable to Fortinet Inc. in the range of 33 to 35 cents. So this was the non gap diluted. So let's actually see what we got over here. Non gap diluted. So we got 34 cents this quarter. All right. So 34 cents, and they're expecting. What? They're expecting 33. Okay, so we they already hit it already this quarter. So they're pretty much just saying, yeah, we're going to stay in line when it comes to this. All right, not bad. And when it comes to the whole entire fiscal year of 2023, revenue between 5.425 billion to 5.485 billion. Service revenue range of 3.37 to 3.4. Billings in the range of 6.75 billion to 6.81 billion. Non gap gross margin of 75 to 76%. Non gap operating margin of 25 to 26%. Diluted non gap net income per share between $1.44 to $1.48. So they're pretty much in line with this kind of current non gap already. So that's really, really interesting to see. So with all of that said, let's come now into the calculator. We got the ticker for FTNT market cap of $53.8 billion with a PE. Guys, that PE is massive. 56.54. Absolute insanity. Current share price of $68.56. The last time I did this company, it was worth $51. And again, I think, I think that I said that it should be worth a lot higher than... $51, I believe. I want to say a lot higher, but I, I think it, I think I said something along the lines of like 80 to $90 or something like that. Again, you guys can fact check me on my own video, but yeah, it was this company from what I can remember, it was fairly decent. In fact, it was more than just fairly decent. Looking at the overall graph guys on the one year, they're up 24.4% year to date. 40. Wow. Oh my God. 41.3%. If you would have invested in this at the beginning of the year at $48, guys, you would be looking so pretty right now. It's not even funny. 52-week range, $42.61 to $69.07. So, with the current share price of, again, $68.56, this is pretty much near 52-week highs. Not the best time to invest, in my personal opinion. But, again, let's see what the free cash flow says because... Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. Now, based off of the five-year average free cash flow and the last year's free cash flow, you guys can see here that, well, it's increasing. The five-year average, it is 982.54 million. And the last year's free cash flow, it is almost 1.45 billion dollars. That's actually really, that's a really nice steady increase if I do say so myself. So far, the only negative thing would be that PE, but 
Again, you don't know, right? Because if a company grows at a multiple of 10 in the next five to 10 years, then you might be willing to pay a certain amount of premium or a certain multiple higher for that kind of growth. So let's take a look now at the fundamentals. And of course, we're going to start off with the net income. We got five years ago of 335 million to one year ago of 857.3 million. That is a massive increase of 156%. Small dip five to four years ago, like by around like $3 million or so. Not too bad. After that, they just ramped it up. Now, I'm giving this an 80% mainly because, well, they did have a small dip. It was four years ago, though, so I'm not going to ding it too much. But what I'm starting to see here is a little bit of hyper symbolic graph happening right over here especially from two to one year ago that's a pretty big jump 250 million dollars is not a lot right in comparison to some, what other companies do but i just i'm i'm afraid about of, of this pretty big jump right here i mean to be fair three to two years ago it was a little bit more than a hundred million dollar gain so that's why i'm giving this guy an 80 percent still though very very respectable looking now at the free cash flow this graph I mean, I saw this thing, and I think I did the same thing when I saw it the first time, too. This graph, guys, is just... Yeah, it's... I don't even know what to say when it comes to this. is absolutely crazy. We got five years ago of $585.9 million, two one year ago of $1.45 billion, increase of 147%, with an average of $982.54 million, as we saw. This graph looks absolutely perfect. There really isn't any outliers anywhere. Consistently increasing, I'm going to give this a 100%. Very, very beautiful free cash flow. Looking now into the revenue. Looks almost as good as the free cash flow. But my personal opinion, eh, the free cash flow looks a little bit better. We have five years ago of $1.8 billion to one year ago of four point. For two billion dollars increase of 144.8 percent guys i'm gonna give this 95 percent mainly because i just think that the jump from two to one is a little bit much but honestly it really isn't a big of a deal that's why again i'm giving it a 95 percent now something that definitely caught my eye even the first time i looked at this was the assets minus the liabilities guys as of one year ago they were in the negatives negative 281.6 million dollars so that's really really bad and of course the reason why this occurred you know what i'll at least give them this it was not due to the fact that their assets went down it was just that their liabilities went up so I guess I'll give them the benefit of the debt when it comes to that, right? I mean, they went from $3.2 billion in liabilities to $5.12 billion in liabilities, pretty much the same year where they went from $4 billion to almost $6 billion. So that's the reason why that went in the negative. I mean, two years ago, they were at 5.12, and then one year ago, they did 6.51. And in the same year, when it comes to the assets, they did almost $6 billion two years ago to then one year ago of 6.23 billion so that's the reason why that occurred again not because of their assets going down but because their liabilities went up not the worst thing but still it's a very very concerning now average total assets it is 5.4 billion dollars average liabilities is 4.84 billion dollars doing this difference we get 545.32 million dollars i forgot to change this number i'm going to give this guys unfortunately this is by far the lowest grade i've given them so far i'm gonna to have to give this like i would have to say like a 10 percent. it really isn't that good of a graph guys it's just really not that good of a metric but you know at least it's mainly their liabilities which they can always pay down and when it comes into the cash flow minus liabilities, yeah, um, not also not surprising. This is just continuously decreasing. Their cash flow is perfectly increasing, but their liabilities are just ramping up massively. So not surprising that this is looking this way. And in fact, as of one year ago, this is negative $5.1 billion, which is a lot lower than the average of almost negative $3 billion. Guys, I'm going to have to give this a 0%. This is just this is bad, consistently decreasing across the board. Now, what did catch me by a massive amount of surprise is this share's outstanding. Because, you know, this isn't a big company. It really isn't a big company. And, well, the fact of the matter is, is that, guys, they are buying back a decent amount of shares, at least in the five year. We got five years ago of 850 million shares to today of 783.2 million shares decrease of seven and three quarters of a percent now um i would have get, given this 100 however i'm gonna change my mind on this because i'm noticing that they did increase it a little bit from one year ago to today and even from five to four not by a lot though but just just, just a tiny amount 
and I personally don't like that, but eh, I would say maybe look up what the share price back then, see what it was, and if it was very, very high, well, that kind of explains that, which honestly, it kind of explains this too. Maybe they sold it at a much higher valuation than what they would think would be fair value, so that's not, you know, it's understandable, if anything, right? 0.22 from the previous year to the current year is not too bad in the slightest when they have already bought back seven and three quarters of our percent, guys. I'm going to give this... You know what? I'm going to give this like a 90%. It's still really, really solid overall. And lastly, when it comes to the cash equivalents, they currently hold $2.3 billion with an average of $1.45 billion. Now, the overall grades is actually not as good good as you would think now the profit metrics look amazing 80 percent for the net income free cash flow 100 percent revenue 95 percent assets minus liabilities 10 percent cash flow minus liabilities zero percent and shares outstanding of 90 percent overall grade of 75 the main problem here guys is for starters actually it's only one main problem and that is just the liabilities if they would just start buying back those liabilities if they start paying down those liabilities it would fix this asset minus liabilities as well as the cash flow minus the liabilities because the cash flow is amazing, 100% free cash flow. That one is is usually rare, very, very rare. So yeah, 75%, it's it's a respectable company. It really, really is. Profit metrics look really good. Again, liabilities is the main problem. So now let's take a look at the discounted free cash flow to see what we can actually find out. Now, without inputting anything, guys, uh, not adjusting for debt, we get $21.54. Adjusting for debt, $46. Now, guys, when I looked at this company originally, I forgot when, when it was, the current share price was $51 or so. So, I mean, just by the base value, assuming, I don't think that much changed. So, assuming just the base value alone, when I originally did this company, it was already a good time to buy in accordance to the discounted free cash. So again, not financial advice, but in accordance to the discounted free cash, it was already a good time to buy. So just ending there, not bad. Now, if we take a look at the graph one more time, if we, if we go to the year, we can see that there were several instances in the past year where it was at or right below that $46 minimum. In fact, as of, what is this? November 3rd, 2022, $45.93. In fact, 52 week range, guys, 42. So you definitely had the chance to buy this company. So I don't know what these values are going to read once I input the assumptions, but understand that whatever it is, guys, if it is higher um, or, or if it is lower, I guess, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't think it will be lower, but if it is lower, you did have the opportunity to buy at around, you know, $46, $50, actually $42 just a few months ago. So let's input some of these revenue growth assumptions. So we can see here that Seeking Alpha saying forward is estimated 25%. And when it comes to their first quarter revenue, guys, if we come back over here, we can see that their <laughs> they increased 32%. Um, you got 25 and 32. That's massive. I don't necessarily know because... I just, I just don't know. So I'm going to put 20, I don't like putting in 23, but I'm going to put 23. I'm going to put 28. I'm going to go up by five. And if we increase 28 by five, guys, that'll be 33%. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Now for the projected share, but I mean, you can, you can already see the, you can already see the target share prices. This is massive. So with now a projected share buyback and let's face it, they have been buying back shares. So if we were to put in a projected share buyback of, let's say for the lowest assumption of 5%, for the median, let's say at around 7%, and for the highest, let's say around 9%, guys, this puts me, target share price, not adjusting for debt, $48.36 or $67.53, adjusting for debt, $99.81 to $138.28. That's absolutely crazy with a margin of safety of 5, 10, 15, $84.84 to $131.37. Again, you did have the ability to buy this thing at $42. In fact, even $50, right? So unfortunately, when it comes to not adjusting for debt, there are a few ones here. Well, I mean, there's only two that are below, significantly below. The one for the highest assumption, $67, it's right there with the current share price. Now, adjusting for debt, this is, this is a screaming. This is just a screaming buy all along. Even with the margins of safety, it's still a screaming buy with the lowest being, again, $84.84. Now, does this mean that you go out and buy it? Absolutely not. Please do your own due diligence. This is not due diligence. This is not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. I got to say, though, their fundamentals look really good. I was surprised the first time, and I'm still surprised today. 
The price, um, I like my cybersecurity companies for starters. I think the price, me personally, I, if I were to get it, which I'm not, but if I were to get this company, I would, honestly, I would not buy him buying it at, at, at this price. I would have preferred to have bought it at around like maybe $60, $55 or so, but honestly, it really just depends as to what you believe because, you know, if you believe that this thing will grow even higher than 33%, then these numbers are going to go a lot more. So guys, these calculators are available for free because I want everybody to make their own financial decisions. You guys saw me input all of these numbers. You can even change the required rate of return. Everything will change based on the numbers that you put. So make sure you put the numbers that you want and you make that decision for yourself of whether or not you want to buy this company or any company, right? Do not wait for me to you know, spin the wheel and to hope that your company shows up. This is why, again, I have all of this for free. All we're asking for in return is just like, subscribe, comment. really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube. Thank you so much for everybody who has done that so far. We are more than 2,500 subscribers in. I want to try and get to 3,000 by the end of the year. That was one of the goals, guys, for 2023. 3,000 by the end of the year. We're already halfway there. Well, actually, more than halfway there. And we aren't even in June yet. So let's try to ramp it up, guys. We're going to try to do a lot more live streams. We're going to also start implementing a lot more shorts as well. So the best way that you guys can help us is by, of course, like, subscribe, commenting, and where the mouth share. Help spread the video if you like this kind of content. Now, looking into the options chains when it comes to FTNT, well, for May 19th, there really isn't much. Actually, kind of surprising, there really isn't much. It's only, well, after you guys are seeing this, it's only Tuesday. Now, for June 16th, also, they don't have weekly expirations either. Um, June 16th, though, there are a decent amount here. Um, premiums, this is more of a company, honestly, just sell covered calls in. I mean, you could, you could see this. For a covered call at 70 bucks, guys, again, if you pop this thing as this company does not pay out the dividend. So if you bought this thing at $42 or $45 or something along those lines, guys, and you know, you and you put in a covered call at $70, that would be a pretty big gain. In fact, let's take out the calculator and do some of that gain. So let's say you bought this thing at around $45 and you do a covered call for $70. So that's 70 minus 45 that is a change of 25 dollars times 100 that is two thousand five hundred dollar gain plus of course the premium of 155 dollars guys that is not looking too bad that is a total gain of $2,655. Now, if you believe that this company should be worth what my calculator is saying on the high end of $138, that would mean that if you were to sell a covered call when it comes to this at around, let's just say 135, and you bought this thing at around 45, if we do that math, we do, let's say 135 minus 45 times 100 that's a gain of nine thousand dollars guys that's absolutely crazy and if you want to talk even more craziness assuming that you wait the year for this company to get to a really really high share price assuming that it does right i'm not saying that will but assuming that it does if you wait the year um you get benefits when it comes to taxation and on top of that, let's just say that it's already at, you know, $140, right? Or $145. And you sell a covered call in the money, which then you would get, according to these, right, which are, you know, for $65. Guys, if you sell an in-the-money covered call for, let's say, $140, assuming that the price is like $145 or $141 or something along those lines, not only would you get the capital gain difference, but you will also get a massive premium of... Uh, let's just keep it roughly the same as you guys see here four thousand seven hundred dollars plus the capital gains plus a tax benefit at the end of the year that's absolutely crazy so do with that information as you will again i'm not telling you guys what to do but that's absolutely crazy so all in all when it comes to fortinet again this is a company that the first time i saw it it did catch me by surprise and it caught me by surprise again i like cybersecurity. i you know we're heading into a more technical technological world it's just it is what it is so face it guys technology is here to stay Cybersecurity will be <laughs> i mean aside from chips and just information tech which i think this company is information tech but like aside from just you know chip manufacturing um you know that kind of stuff it, it, this is going to be the next best thing, right? This is going to be like top tier, top of the line. Um, Tesla, you know, EV is great. Cybersecurity, at the end of the day, though, 
Tesla will also need such cybersecurity too, right? So, I mean, we've all played Watch Dogs, so yeah. Anyways, guys, is that pretty much it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe, it really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. Y'all can follow us on the new tech sites. Link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out. We'll see you all next time.